As ever, the size of the A380 increases the challenge. The bigger the engine, the bigger the blades, and the greater the energy released if one were to fail. Spinning at 3,000 revolutions per minute, the blades experience a force of more than 7,000 times their own weight. So everything is done to make them as light and as strong as possible. A top secret process molds the plates from ultra strong, ultra light titanium alloy. To save further weight, the blades are heated to 900 degrees in a furnace until they are softened. The gas is pumped into cavities inside the blade, inflating it like a long thin balloon. The result is a hollow part curved in three directions for aerodynamic efficiency. Supremely strong, yet light enough for someone to pick up and move quite easily. Each one costs the same as a luxury car. And a full set of 24 are about to be destroyed in the name of safety. To begin with, the engine is run at low power, so final checks can be made. Over in the viewing room, Hilary Barton and her colleagues are anxiously waiting. The main concern is that as blade is blown free, the casing around the fan absorbs the huge impact and prevents potentially lethal shrapnel from escaping. High-speed film cameras are used to analyze the action, and at last, the throttles are opened and the engine brought to its full, awesome power. This is what it feels like to be inside a building 200 yards away from a nine million pound blade off event. Blade off testing is normally top secret. But for the first time, Rolls-Royce have released this footage. Although the engine was totally destroyed, the fan case did its job, and no large lumps of metal were ejected. It's been a good day. I feel very relieved, obviously. It's gone well. We've had a good test and it's all credit to the guys. And yes, we've, we've, got, we've got a successful test under a belt. So I uh, feel relieved and really pleased. Back in France, the plane is about to leave the equipping hall. Instead of the planned October afternoon, it's a foggy, grey December morning. <laughs> With the grand unveiling just five weeks away, the next giant task is to paint the massive machine. In yet another vast hangar, working over the Christmas holidays, 90 painters descend on the plane. First, they rub down over 100,000 square feet of bodywork. Then, after a superhuman effort of masking off, the A380 is ready for a brand new paint job. All in all, more than half a ton of paint and primer are needed to protect the aluminium skin from the elements. The final livery is a closely guarded secret and won't be revealed until the big day. Until now, the A380 has been a private project. Today, it goes public. As usual, it's a massive undertaking. 
Inside part of the final assembly line, seating for 5,000 guests has been installed. In the equipping hall, TV reporters are hard at work, feeding the story to the networks. Richard Brunson, head of Virgin Atlantic, has grabbed the headlines with news of double beds and casinos in his planes. For John Leahy and thousands of others, it's a dream come true. It took an awful long time to get here, didn't it? But now we're here. It's pretty exciting. The heads of state and governments arrive and take their places for a spectacle featuring dry ice, flying machines, and computer graphics. Speeches are made, but there's only one star of this show. Finally, the biggest airliner of all time is there for all to see. Today is the culmination of more than 10 years of effort by thousands of people from all over the world. Well, it's a good achievement, huh? I mean, a good show and uh, good speeches and uh, a nice aircraft. And uh, tomorrow back to work to make it fly. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. This is an exciting day, but we can't relax. You can't let up on the pressure. The pressure for sales, the pressure for performance, the pressure to get this airplane out and make it happen. There's still a very long way to go.